Hi, I'm Bill Mould. I work at the Spokes Etc. store on North Quaker Lane in Alexandria and my job is to build custom wheels and the wheel I want to show you is the one that was probably the greatest science and engineering challenge of any that I've built uh, so far. And I'm going to show you the, uh, the details of this, but this is basically a hub from a moped which I have laced up to a bicycle rim so that a college professor can convert an old moped into a modern day equivalent of a board track racer. If you're not sure what a board track racer is, Google that and you'll be in for some interesting photos for sure. Now the first challenge was figuring out what kind of spokes and rim to use and I opted to use motorcycle spokes and I had to use motorcycle spokes because the holes in the hub are so large that the head of a bicycle spoke would pull right through the hole which meant that I had to use motorcycle spokes. Here's a close up of one side of the hub. That's one of the holes in the hub and you can see it's a pretty large hole. So this normal bicycle spoke, the head of the spoke is way too small and the diameter of the spoke is too small. It would just pull right through the hole. Motorcycle spokes of course come with motorcycle nipples and those nipples are much too big to go through a bicycle rim and that necessitated drilling out all of these holes in the rim not only in the front where the nipple comes through but in the back where the back of the nipple goes through to accommodate the enormous nipples that go with motorcycle spokes. So you can see one problem uh, led to another and then I had to space out with washers uh, the space between the spoke and uh, the hub flanges to take up some of the excess space and the length of the, uh, the elbow of the motorcycle spokes. I used this velocity cliffhanger rim because it's a very strong rim. I could get it in the 26 inch size that I needed and I know that there's a lot of aluminum in the spoke bed so I knew that I could drill out the spoke bed to accommodate the larger motorcycle nipples without weakening of the spoke bed by too much. Here is a velocity cliffhanger rim laced up with bicycle spokes and nipples. This is the same rim using motorcycle spokes and motorcycle nipples and here is a comparison of the two. So I used a variety of nylon washers of different uh, dimensions to take up the excess space in the length of the elbow of the spoke. So I supported the hub so it wouldn't fall over and then stacked up some videos to support the rim at about the right height. And then I just laid in some spokes using silver spokes for one direction and black spokes for the other to try to figure out a lacing pattern. And I settled on a two cross pattern that I thought would be uh, correct. And that enabled me to then make the measurements so I could calculate the correct length of the spokes I'd need. And then I had to figure out how to tension the wheel. And what I did was I used my supreme tensiometer and used known tension readings for some round smokes of smaller diameter and plotted a graph which turned out to be a straight line graph and I extrapolated that to, to the dimension of these spokes here to give me what I think is a fairly good idea of what the tension is on these spokes here because no bicycle tensiometer is made to measure these kinds of spoke tensions directly. This is my Supreme digital tensiometer and note the high-end Mitutoyo gauge. This is the conversion table that comes with the Supreme tensiometer. This row represents the tension I want on the spokes measured either as 1177 newtons or 120 kilograms of force. I plotted a graph. The x-axis measures the spoke diameter in millimeters and the y-axis is the deflection of the tensiometer also in millimeters. Using the conversion chart that comes with the Supreme Temp Geometer, I looked at five diameters of spokes, a 1.5 millimeter, a 1.7, a 1.8, a 2, and a 2.3. And for those same five diameters, if I look at 
the deflection I will get with 120 kilograms of force. This is the reading for the 1.5, the 1.7, the 1.8, the 2, and the 2.3. Those combinations give me five plot points on the graph with the coordinates in parentheses. I can connect those five dots with a line and any point on that line represents a combination of thickness and deflection representing 1177 newtons or 120 kilograms of force. My motorcycle spoke has a diameter of 3.2 millimeters. This line here represents the 3.2 millimeter motorcycle spoke and the linear nature of the graph so far suggests to me that I can extend that line until it connects with the blue line representing the thickness of the spoke. That new point I plotted tells me that that 3.2 millimeter motorcycle spoke should be about 120 kilograms when I have a deflection of 7 millimeters on my tensiometer. Now even if I think my line isn't perfectly linear and actually slopes up slightly, I still get a range on my tensiometer of between 7 and 7.5 millimeters of deflection representing 120 kilograms of force on the motorcycle spokes. I was able to get the spoke tension really quite well balanced out so there was quite a bit of consistency and these two readings here suggest to me that I'm probably in the ballpark. So by using the data that I had and making a, an inference from that I was able to come up with what I think is the right spoke tension for the wheel and even if this is not 100% accurate it's a lot better than just guessing by squeezing the spokes which plainly would not give me any information that really is scientifically valid. And then when Dave, this college professor in Arkansas, finishes his moped restoration, he'll send me a photo and I'll be sure to share that with you.